Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So we're back in the garage with my Mustang Mach-E and we've got a Tesla product here. We've got the Tesla Universal Wall Connector and I'm going to be upgrading my home charging um, to use this unit with my Mustang Mach-E. Um, so if you notice here in the garage, the walls are pretty bare. Um, so we're doing some much needed garage upgrades. Going to get the walls painted, floors done, upgrading the electrical to put this in. So I'll have a separate video kind of showing the whole project. Um, so subscribe and check out the channel if you want to see that. But in this video, we're going to be focusing on, on this product um, and how I, you know, how I ended up choosing this for my Mustang Mach-E. Um, so a brief overview, and if you want to skip ahead to see the unboxing and see it being used with the Mustang Mach-E, I'll chapter this, so feel free to skip ahead. But just wanted to give an overview, you know, why did I choose this for my Mustang Mach-E? So if you're not familiar with this product, Tesla has had their wall connector that looks basically just like this. They've had that for a long time, uh, but it just had the NAX port on the end, the typical Tesla NAX connector. Um, and that's what this unit is, but it also has a built-in adapter within the unit, um, so you can easily switch between charging a car with a NAX port or charging a car with a J1772 port, um, like my Mach-E has. Um, and so how did I pick this one? Well, I really like that capability to switch uh, to either port. So for me with the YouTube channel, I'd really like a simple way to be able to kind of charge whatever EV I bring over, um, whether that be um, you know, a, a Tesla Model Y, um, a Rivian, a Mach-E, whatever, I'd like to be able to easily charge those vehicles um, and not have to be playing around with adapters. Now, technically, this does use an adapter to switch that, but it's all built in, it's right there, ready to go. You don't need to you know, dig around in the glove box to find it. And also, you know, as far as a home upgrade goes, this feels like the most generic option you can get. You know, if somebody is gonna buy this house and drives a Tesla, they're good to go. If somebody doesn't drive a Tesla, they're also good to go um, because many automakers are gonna be switching to the NAX port here soon, but we're still kind of midway, you know, I wouldn't even say midway, only partway through that transition. You know, a lot of the supercharging support has happened with um, the getting the adapters for CCS, but as far as native ports on the cars, there's only a few automakers that are, you know, kind of starting to roll that out, and that's gonna probably take a few years. So this seems like the kind of the, the best package. Um, I also like the pricing on this. You know, I really thought long and hard about getting one of the Ford chargers just because that would kind of complete the Mach-E, but the numbers just didn't make sense to me. I mean, Ford's basically equivalent of this, which is only J1772. It can't do NAX unless you put an adapter on there. Um, you know, that's $799, and this was um, five, $550. So, you know, that's a pretty significant savings. Um, Ford also has their power promise right now where if you buy a new um, Ford EV, um, they'll install a home charger with you. Depending on when you're watching this, you'll have to check on their site to see if they're still offering that or not. But they were actually installing the Ford Power Station Pro, which can do up to 80 amps of AC charging. I already have my Mach-E, so I can't do the Ford Power Promise. Um, but I was thinking, you know, that, that charger looks, looks great. You know, obviously plenty of capability. But it's, it's pretty expensive. You can find some of them on the used markets. The other thing I was hung up on with that Ford Power Station Pro Charger uh, is it uses a CCS plug. So it's primarily using AC for the charging with a J1772, um, but then it's using the DC pins on the bottom to be able to send power back you know, into your house to power your house. Well, when you're not using that, no big deal, but that port is still there, and so I was just thinking, you know, if I end up having a, you know, a NAX car in the future, whether that be a Tesla or another automaker, um, you're going to need some kind of adapter to use that charger. So I just didn't really love the idea. Um, I also have a Tesla account already, so I can use their superchargers. So I already have like a little account set up. I already have the app on my phone. Um, so this seemed like kind of the, the best bang for the buck, best package to charge any vehicle, good price. Um, it can't do 80 amps, but it can do up to 48 amps, um, which is, that's all the Mach-E can do anyways. You know, most EVs are only able to do up to 48 amps. Um, there are some now, um, especially a lot of the big um, electric trucks can do up to the 80 amps. Uh, but then that's also a really big circuit. You need a 100 amp circuit to be able to do an 80 amp charger. And I don't think I'm going to go up that high anyways. So. Um, that's how I ended up with this package, um, and I'm excited to try it out, and uh, we'll see how it works with the Mach-E.
All right, so here's the box. Um, it has a universal wall connector. It says, made on Earth by humans. So thank you for accelerating the world's transition to sustainable energy. The unit definitely looks and feels a little bit bigger in person than maybe you might be expecting. Um, let me get the Ford mobile connector. So yeah, just a little size comparison here. So here's the Tesla one. Um, so you can see, you know, it's definitely a little bit taller and then it's much, much, much thicker. Um, but keep in mind that the Tesla one does up to 48 amps where this, this only does an EMA 1450, but it's limited to 32 amps. And also there's no holster or anything in the mobile connector, hence it being a mobile connector. Um, and then you can see on this side, here is the little adapter that connects the Tesla NAX to J1772. Um, and I believe for this to actually be able to come out of here, you have to have the unit powered on. So we're not gonna be able to pull that out right now. Okay, so there's a kind of a first layer of cardboard and then the second layer is under here where the rest of the cord is. Um, and here's the end of the connector right here. It comes with an installation guide. So this is a template you can put on your wall so you know what screw holes to use, where you're gonna run um, your cabling into the unit. Um, got some instructions here. So yeah, so you can see, um, you know, NAX, you just pull it straight out of the side. And then if you wanna use J1772, you just uh, press that little tab there and it'll pull out with the adapter attached. All right, well, the unit has been professionally installed. It looks really nice. All the wiring is through the wall there. You can see we got power now. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. Um, doing a bunch of updates here in the garage, like I mentioned. So I have a video coming. I'll talk more about the electrical panel side, you know, what I had done there. Um, but for now, um, I did have them put in the max current that this can do. So um, we're now gonna be able to do 48 amps at 240 volts. Um, and that's, that's a 60 amp breaker, but you can do much lower than that. And frankly, this is, this is more than I need. Um, but for a lot of the YouTube work I'm doing, um, maybe having some other cars on the channel, um, this will be really nice. So I can charge those a little more quickly when I have them here, um, to review them and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, really excited with how this turned out. Um, we're going to go through commissioning the unit so you can see that in the app. And uh, we're gonna do the first charge here on the Mach E. So I haven't actually gotten to do that yet. So I'm excited to try that out. So let's go. Okay, so I'll put exactly how long this cable is. I think it's roughly 20 feet. So you can see uh, the cord here. Um, haven't unwrapped the connector yet, but you know, plenty of length to make it up there. Here's what it looks like. Um, looks really nice. This is glossy here. Um, Nax connector here. So here's the Tesla plug. Here's the Ford plug. Um, so they're actually pretty much the same length. Obviously the Ford plugs a little bit taller. Um, and then you can see that's J1772 there. Um, so yeah, and you can see the difference in the cable thickness. So the Ford one's definitely thinner cause it can only do up to 32 amps. Um, but the Tesla one is still very flexible. So then on the unit, it says remove paper. So we're going to pull that off and then we're going to Connect this in here just like that. Okay, so if you want to charge the Tesla you just pull it straight out And then if you want to charge with the J1772 There's the adapter right there um, So yeah, so now we can Charge the Mach-E in theory um, and then this adapter is fully locked on here um, This tab is to release plugging into the car, but you can't move remove this at least not easily um, it's like fully locked on there so pull you can do tesla pull the tab you can do j1772 so yeah next step let's commission the unit okay, so we're going to launch the tesla app here add a product we've got the wall connector get started is there a qr code yes there's a qr code on the side of the unit it says incorrect QR label. Okay, the one on the unit can't be used, so we gotta go get the one in the box. 
Okay, so it says connect to wall connector. So now the wall connector has a bunch of lights lit up. Okay, so then this is pretty cool. So there's no physical dip switches you have to change in the unit itself. You can configure this in the app. So we have a 60 amp breaker, so we're gonna put that, but you can see the other options here. There we go, okay. So scheduled charging, um, we're not gonna do this right now because I kind of want to be able to use it whenever, but you could do that. Okay, it's gonna register the device. All set, done. Cool, there it is in my home and that looks good. So it says idle, we'll go ahead and get plugged in here. Okay, here we go. Wonder why I heard that latch sound. Usually you don't hear the automatic latch sound. Okay, and car shows were charging. I heard something click over on the unit. Let's go take a look at the unit here. Okay, so the wall connector shows we're charging and yeah, it looks like we're charging here. So let's uh, let's check the app. Okay, so in the Tesla app, um, 9.6 kilowatts electric vehicle, 11.2, so it, it ramped up there. So it looks like we're doing the full 48 amps, 90% by 1144, so that's only three hours from now, um, which that's expected. So if we go look at the charging speed, uh, on here it says charge rate 10.5 kilowatts. Let's go back to here. This is saying 11.2. I'm not sure what the discrepancy would be there. Could be the, the car is using some, um, you know, off the top. Okay, so we've got 9.8 going into the battery is what this is showing. Um, four pass, still showing 10.5. Yeah, I'm turning some lights. Let me turn the fan off in the car. There we go. So we're getting more into the battery now. Okay, yeah, so everything's looking normal here. So yeah, 90%, 11.46 p.m. Um, you know, that's that's roughly three hours from now, so that's pretty awesome. Um, obviously, this is gonna charge it faster than I really need in, in most cases, but it's gonna be really nice to have this capability for, you know, charging other EVs, doing tests on this vehicle, being able to pretty quickly recharge it. All right, and you can see the units charging here. So that looks good. Got plenty of cable length here. You can see it's plugged into the car. Still got a little bit to spare. Um, so yeah, that's looking really good. Uh, so you might also be wondering, you know, how long does it take to charge? I mentioned three hours there to get from 45 up to 90%. Um, so I made this table, which will hopefully help. Uh, but my Mach-E, you know, usable is 70 kilowatt hours. And I'm basically going from the slowest way to charge my Mach-E, which is on a 120 volt outlet at 12 amps. So just over one kilowatt to the fastest way you can charge it, at least on AC charging, which is 240 volts at 48 amps. Um, so big difference there is, you know, roughly 10 X faster now. So yeah, I made this table, which will show you, you know, just how big of a difference it is. And like I mentioned, you don't have to go to a 60 amp circuit, you know, even just getting up to the 240 volt voltage that already doubles your speed from 110 volt. And then you could consider going to, you know, maybe a, a 30 amp, um, which would be 24 amps going to the car. So that's like half this speed, but you know, that's still gonna recharge you overnight, no problem. Yeah, and like I mentioned, I'm gonna be doing some more videos. I've got some garage videos coming um, where I talk more about my electrical panel. Also gonna have some other tests, you know, running the car to zero, seeing how that goes, um, hopefully recalibrating the BMS, since this car has never really been fully recharged from zero to 100 on AC charging. Um, it's gotten spurts here and there on the 110 and you know, some public charging. Um, so I'm hoping to maybe regain a little bit of uh, battery health there, but we'll see. So subscribe if you wanna see those videos coming up and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching, bye.